Right then, the answer then to question 6, part A. So we have the equations, let's just write them down. y equals x minus 4 and 2x squared minus xy equals 8. Now with any set of simultaneous equations, get into the habit of numbering them, so we'll number them 1 and 2. So often people do things and expect the examiners just to understand what you're doing. So by numbering them, we can relate to the equations. Okay, so we've got to eliminate y from these equations. And because they don't have the same pattern structure, we can't just go around just adding or subtracting them. What we have to do is use the method of substitution. Well, this is quite an easy one, actually, because we've got in number one we've got y equals some function of x, x minus 4. So we can immediately substitute wherever there's a y, x minus 4 in equation 2. Okay, so don't just do it, do tell the examiners what you're doing. Okay, so just say for instance sub, for short, for substitute, sub number one into 2. Okay, just enough to be able to give some idea what's going on. Okay, so if we do that, we therefore have 2x squared minus x. Now instead of the y, we've got x minus 4. There's a couple of terms there, so make sure you have them in brackets. Okay, so x times what would have been y, which is now x minus 4. And this equals 8. So I put equals 8 on the end. Okay, so we've now just got to expand this. Keep an eye on what we've got to show. x squared plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. And that should help us see our way through this. So expanding this, okay, we've got the first term anyway. That just stays the same. 2x squared. Then we have minus x squared when we expand the bracket. Be careful here, minus x times minus 4 plus 4x, okay, equals 8. Therefore, okay, what do we do next? 2x squared take away x squared, that's going to give x squared. Then we have the plus 4x, and if we subtract 8 from both sides, we have minus 8 here, and 8 take away 8 is 0. And there you have it, okay? We've been able to show that we get that quadratic equation. Okay, moving on to part B then. Hence or otherwise solve the simultaneous equations. So using the fact that it says hence gives us an indication that really we should be looking at what we've just found and using it. So we've got a quadratic equation here. And to solve a quadratic equation, normally we would try and factorise it. But if you notice at the bottom, it says giving your answers in the form a plus or minus b root 3. That's given me a clue already that most probably this doesn't factorise. So what I'm going to uh, do, just glance over that. Now I can see it doesn't factorise. So what I'm going to do is use the quadratic formula. Hopefully you're familiar with the quadratic formula. Just remind you again over here. Whoops, what's that doing? Okay, here we go. If we've got any quadratic in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught. Hopefully you know that x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Okay? Well, in this example, a is 1, b is the plus 4, and c is the minus 8. So therefore, if we use the formula, x equals minus b, so that's minus 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's going to be 4 squared minus 4 times the a number, that's the 1, times the c number, which is negative 8. And all that lot is divided by 2 times the first term, sorry, 2 times a, 2 times 1, which is 2. 
cleaning this up we have negative 4 plus or minus and we have the square root of 16 and this comes to 32 16 and 32 makes 48 so we have the square root of 48 let's just put a top on that all divided by 2 now getting some clues here because they wanted the answer in the form a plus b root 3 so it's suggesting that there's this can be broken down and has something like a 3 involved well 16 threes make 48 so I can think of the square root of 48 let's just show you over here the square root of 48 is the same as the square root of 16 times 3 and this is exactly the same as the root of 16 multiplied by the root of 3 that's a basic Serd's rule square root of 16 we know is 4 and then we have just the root 3 4 root 3 so over here we have x equals minus 4 then plus or minus 4 root 3 and that's all divided by 2 we have two terms on the top each of these two terms are divisible by the 2 so we can divide the top by 2 that gives us the answer minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 3 so there's the couple of values for x okay let's just move that up a little bit further give us a bit more room now because it's a simultaneous equation we want to find out what the corresponding values of y are so let's say that when x equals the minus 2 we'll take the plus option here plus 2 root 3 what we need to do is find y and what we can do is substitute this value back into the first equation. Do you remember the equation number 1 was y equals x minus 4? So I'll substitute that back into there. Let's just bring that down a bit. So when x equals that, sub in 1. And we end up with y equals um, x minus 4. So x is minus 2 plus 2 root 3 and then we subtract 4 and what we get is minus 2 minus 4 which is minus 6 plus 2 root 3 okay going to do exactly the same again for the other value of x so when x was equal to minus 2 minus 2 root 3 again sub this into 1 and we get the corresponding value for y which is y equals minus 2 minus 2 root 3 that's the x part and then subtract the remaining 4 so what we get is equal to minus 6 minus 2 root 3 okay so we have then both of our solutions for the simultaneous equation x equals minus 2 plus 2 root 3 and the corresponding value of y is minus 6 plus 2 root 3 and then minus 2 minus 2 root 3 with the corresponding value of y minus 6 minus 2 root 3 it's really quite a good idea actually to summarize your results so what I'll do is I'll just put them over here that we have x equals minus 2 plus 2 root 3 okay and y equals minus 6 plus 2 root 3 or quite separately we can have x equals minus 2 minus 2 root 3 and the corresponding value of y was minus 6 minus 2 root 3 okay